question number one for you, Amanda. I think it's for you. Oh, it might actually be for me. <laughs> you want to okay. read it? Why don't you read it? Oh, yeah, sure. I guess it is for you. I see your favorite. I see Dodge and Cox it. mentioned in this question. So we'll. we'll uh, yeah, I it. haven't looked at any of these questions in advance. So. All right, here it is. I'm getting ready to retire and have way too much in Dodge and Cox and the rest in a 2020 target date fund. Oh, two of your favorite things, Craig. <laughs> I'm going with your suggestions of Harbor and Vanguard 500, but thought I should include the Vanguard bond and maybe leave some in the target date fund until the end of the year. What say you? Mm. I see that word bond in there. Uh, we, we But they are close to retirement. So yeah, uh, that is adjust true. your rant accordingly. So... What we coach everybody is we use the S&P 500 index fund as our core investment and anything that can outperform the S&P 500 index on a short, medium, and long-term range. Right, Amanda? Mm -hmm. So we also coach that if you're within five to 10 years of retirement, we back off that gas pedal because we're large cap gross stock mutual funds. And the reason why we back off those investments within five to 10 years of your planned retirement age is that typically a stock market when we have these downturns, which happen all the time. I mean, it's, it's actually normal, believe it or not, is you need time for the stock market to recover. So if you actually need this money going into retirement, we, we don't want it to be fully vested in the stock market. So the simplest way of doing that, Amanda, we've said multiple times, is just pick the target date fund for the year you're going to retire if you're within five to 10 years. Within that target date fund, you do have a mix of stocks and bonds and money market, and they automatically adjust that for you. So it's pretty automated. And you should get four to 6% on average long term with that investment. So you do have some protection. So within the question, they're they're trying to do that themselves, which kind of concerns me a little bit. I'd rather you talk to a fee-only financial advisor or do the target date fund or both. But yeah. I, I would not, when you get to retirement age, I would not be doing, if you're not familiar how to do this, don't do it on your own. Please don't. Yeah. Because you are now critical. Now, if you're 25, large cap growth stock, mutual funds, full gas pedal to the metal, let's go. What do you say? I say I wish I was 25 again. <laughs> I'm with you. I think we covered that, but but that that's our basics. And we, we've said that since day one. And I've been doing that for a long time. I don't do anything with bond funds. Now, let me just get back to the target date fund. We are not a fan of target date funds. If you just get hired at a company, most companies will put you in a target date fund if you have a 401k at your yeah. employment. Um, yeah, we and don't that's like because those. Most people don't actively go in there and make a selection. So right. they're just helping you out by putting you in right. something. And that's the something they default to. It's not totally bad. It's just that you can do better, especially if you do yeah. have the S&P 500 index funds and large cap growth stocks. So yeah. we can du almost double that amount if you just take an active role and follow the general advice we're telling you, which is yeah. very standard advice, actually, outside of somebody selling you something. So anyway, there you go.